The New South Wales Treasurer has declared this year's state budget is a budget of must-haves and not nice-to-haves, while unveiling a huge spending on housing and a new cost-of-living initiative. Our political reporter in New South Wales, Julia Bradley, has got the budget breakdown. And firstly, talk us through the state's mm. overall budget position. Well, Kieran, this budget already being described as a threadbare budget. It's Treasurer Daniel Mookie's second in nine months. And today he is again squarely blaming the Commonwealth Grants Commission's decision to reduce our share of GST as the reason we're in this difficult financial position. It was last year that he promised the state would see a modest return to surplus by next financial year, but now those hopes have been dashed. It's really deficits as far as the eye can see. To put that into perspective, the 2023-24 deficit of $9.7 billion is nearly 50% higher than what was forecast early last year, but the Treasurer says with careful spending we could claw back $8 billion by 2027-28. Now in terms of revenue, while there has been a reduction in GST and payroll tax revenue, there will be gains in stamp duty and pokies revenue. The government also hoping to net about $1.5 billion over four years by introducing what some have described as a stealth tax. This is freezing the tax-free threshold for land tax at the 2024 level of $1.075 million, essentially targeting more people with investment properties. I spoke to the Treasurer about this while we were in budget lockup. We expect it to raise about $1.6 billion, but let's just get the facts on the table here. Very, very few people pay land tax in New South Wales. Of those who do pay land tax in New South Wales, the vast majority claim a lot of that back from the federal government. We're confident that we will be making good decisions going forward into the future about what the land tax threshold is, but rather than leaving an, an autopilot, the government will make those decisions according to the market conditions that are in place at the time. And Julia, what are the new promises today? Well, Kieran, housing was really the centrepiece of this budget and that is what we're all expecting, particularly for those who are the most vulnerable in our community, but also for victim survivors of domestic and family violence. The Minns government will spend $5.1 billion to deliver 8,400 new social homes, of which 6,200 will be brand new. Half of those new homes will be set aside for victim survivors of domestic and family violence. The government has already identified 44 new sites where these homes could be built. Homes New South Wales and the government's development arm, Landcom, will get first dibs. But then surplus government land will be released to the private market in the hope a further 21,000 homes will be built as part of a broader promise to deliver 30,000 new homes over four years. Now, Kieran, another key pledge to make note of, a $188 million bulk billing initiative. Tax rebates will be given to GP clinics that meet bulk billing thresholds. The government will also waive historical payroll tax liabilities for contractor GPs. Here was the Treasurer. It's got to make it a lot more affordable for people to see a doctor. The last thing we want to see is GP practices shutting down. What we're doing today is we're saying that if you bulk bill at 80% in Sydney or 70% in the rest of New South Wales, you won't need to pay payroll tax on any GP contractor wage. So, Kieran, the real sense of this budget handed down today is that there aren't those broad cash handouts for families doing it tough in the same way that we recently saw in Queensland with their pre-election budget. However, about $100 million more million will go into an already existing energy rebate scheme for certain families doing it tough. More spending on education and on health, on transport. We'll have more reaction throughout the afternoon. Julia, thank you.